Hello everybody, welcome to another True Review. Today I'm bringing you Paranautical Activity on the Xbox One. It was released on the 29th of April and I believe it's going to be priced at 9 99 in the UK. And what we have here is a roguelike uh, FPS game where you have to progress through 8-4s which become more difficult as you progress through them. You've got a selection of four characters to start off with, all of them kind of act in different ways, like there's a more tanky character, there's a fast character, there's an average one, and uh, there's one that's kind of like a, a little bit more uh, melee than he is um, ranged. And each of these characters play very, very differently, but uh, all of them share one thing in common, they've not got a lot of health, even their tank only has nine hit points with each enemy hit taking a single hit point from you. Now how the game progresses, it's much like other roguelikes, uh, FPS games which are available on the system like Ziggurat for example, where you have to simply find the exit, uh, whilst in other games like that you may have to find keys and such, in this you simply do have to find the exit room which is always a boss room as well, defeat the boss and progress to the next room until you've completed all 8 floors. There is also two other characters to unlock, although I have not managed to unlock them yet due to the game's brutal difficulty, I have not progressed much past floor number 4. Now, graphically the style is a very very interesting and odd choice to be honest with you. It's very very dark as you probably can see from the footage. And the design of the rooms isn't too good as well. It kind of the, Every room tends to be a square room but there's, there's a few rooms that do have a bit of height to them as well. But well, they're all genuinely square rooms with like little flights of stairs and walkways on them as well. And uh, I believe they're procedurally generated because um, you do see the similar kind of rooms every now and then. But the way it places these rooms, the rooms are very very difficult to navigate and some of the enemies are very difficult to see simply because of the walkways and stairways that are just placed all over the shop. And also the enemies are very difficult to see as well due to the darkness of the level. I would have liked to have a bit more colour in the game, I'm just, I'm not, the colour palette and colour choices and graphical choices in the game are just not doing it for me. I, I would have much liked a more vibrant, colourful kind of game and it would have been good because it's a shame because the actual shooting mechanics are pretty solid. The the weapons act all differently to one another, the crosshairs are quite accurate and the FPS shooting is very very tight. But it's just that the amount of enemies it spawns onto you when you walk into a room, you can instantly take several hits without even knowing it because sometimes enemies spawn literally centimetres away from where you actually are. And uh, another one of the game's issues is there's a lack of audio visual feedback from when you actually fire the guns, when you hit enemies or when enemies hit you. Sometimes it's very difficult to know you've been hit and when one of the melee enemies, for example, like a very small kind of like slug-like creature which is very difficult to see unless you actually look directly down at the floor, can be nibbling away at your ankles just decimating your hit points which are like I say, even with a tank you only have 9, the weakest character only has 3. And uh, it's um, it's just crazy how it does that. I mean, you just you just don't know that an enemy is there, and like I said, lack of audio visual feedback from when you're getting hit just causes a massive problem, really. And you can just wonder why you've died. You've not even seen your assailant. Uh, Sound-wise, there's a musical soundtrack for each of the floors and that kind of like thumps throughout the levels and doesn't change, doesn't drop a beat and that kind of adds to the lack of audio visual feedback because you simply just get in this tune, you get a no impact sounds from the guns or anything. So kind of like this, the soundtrack's kind of like drowning out the sound effects but it's not because the sound effects are just simply not, not actually present. In terms of difficulty, this game is very, very brutal. Like I say, only 9 hit points for the strongest character who incidentally has a really rubbish weapon, so his, his health doesn't go that far, to be honest with you. But um, it is a very, very brutal game. It's very, very unforgiving. And I think the strength of any roguelike is when you die and you know it's punishing and you do die and you lose all your progress and you want to jump back in and start and have another go. And to be honest with you, with Paranormal Collectivity, after about four or five goes, of very very quick goes to be honest with you, I didn't want to play it anymore. I just didn't, it just wasn't doing it for me, it wasn't driving me making me have that one more go. Even though I was making progress and learning that you've basically got to keep on the move all the time and make sure you don't get jammed on a bit of, in a bit of scenery. Um, he just didn't want me to have that other go. Now this is for a person who likes FPS roguelikes. 
and uh, I can attest to that because one of my favourite games, my favourite game of last year was a roguelike FPS called Cigarette and um, I've got over 150 hours into this and that was a, a prime example of you die, you lose all your progress even if you could spend an hour and a half, you're on the last level, you die and you want another go of it because it's good, it's exciting, it's got that one more go factor but Paranoid Activity just doesn't have that. It's, it's just cumbersome in how they've done it, the lighting effects don't help, you get jammed on the scenery, the, the, the rooms are nonsensical how they're constructed. As you can see from the video footage, they're just like stairways and catwalks just all placed all over the place and there's just no rhyme or reason to why they're actually there. Turning to the achievements, the achievements is very very difficult, uh, there's a few freebie achievements where you will get them just by generally playing like silly ones for not completing a level without jumping, completing a f uh, room without getting hit, uh, but there's ones for killing certain bosses which again with it all being procedurally generated you're not guaranteed to get those bosses uh, at all to be honest with you, and there's ones for clearing the game in 15 minutes which I just can't get my head around how that's even humanly possible at this, uh, this stage of me playing it. And um, yeah, it's a very very difficult thousand uh, game score or platinum trophy if you're on the on the PlayStation. But uh, yeah, if you're into into that kind of thing, it's definitely not going to be a, an easy ride. Which is which is good in a way, but uh, I feel that the game's difficulty is more down to its design flaws, more to a, a game's difficulty is constructed is constructed well. It's designed to be difficult. I think this is not designed to be difficult. It's difficult through design because it's not designed very very well and I hope that makes sense so yeah a roguelike which doesn't want you to have that one more go which gives you frustration which makes you lose your rag which doesn't want you to have that one more go doesn't really sit well with me to be honest with you uh, which is a shame because like I say the actual FPS the actual shooting mechanics of it is sound it's just that the design decisions of the dark graphical style the room layouts and um, it just doesn't, doesn't doesn't seem to work to me, to be honest with you. One interesting note of fact as well, when I did first boot the game up, it was even darker. I had my television set to game mode. So just in case anybody else has this problem, and it was nigh on pitch black, I could just see the beady red eyes of the enemies. Uh, if anybody else has that problem, try changing your television from game mode. I actually put it into normal television visual mode. So obviously the game mode is to, to compensate for lag on LCDs and LED televisions. Uh, I changed it from game mode and the game was an awful lot lighter. I actually could see the kind of like pastel blues and purples of the level where before it was just literally pitch black, pitch black screen with red beady eyes of the enemies. So um, that's one thing I would say if you do if you do uh, play this game and you are struggling to see and you think it is too dark um, trade change your, your television setting so I'm going to give Paranoid Collectivity a 5 out of 10 like I say the, the solidness of the FPS mechanics do save it but like I say the design flaws are just too much to overlook and like I say roguelike where you don't want to have that one more go um, isn't doing what it's supposed to do really because you you want to be able to die and you want to be able to feel that you've accomplished something and you want to feel that you've, you've died through a mistake of your own not because the game design has thrown you a, a curveball by getting you jammed on a on a bit of scenery or spawning an enemy right on top of you with no time to react. So yeah, a 5 out of 10 for Paranoid Collectivity. So I hope you enjoyed that review guys. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe and follow me on my various social media pages. It does help me build the channel, get these reviews to you as quickly as possible. And I'll catch you on the next video.